This is The Soul Garden, presented by me, Georgina Langdale, for the Centre for Nature Connection, and it's where we get to explore nature, compassion and soul through the inner and outer workings of living in a connected world. Hello, Georgina here. Lovely, as always, to have you here with me. And today, the day that I release this um, podcast, it's World Menopause Day. I mean, who knew there was such a thing? But anyway, there is. And it's like a whole lot of different parts of my life and work converged. I'm a woman in my mid-50s. I have gone through menopause and uh, survived the experience. In fact, I thrived in the experience. Also, for a number of years now, I have been helping and supporting women um, in a variety of ways as they, too, journey through menopause. I offer coaching and guidance Um, my uh, renaissance readings and soul aligned workshops all sorts of things to help with that emotional and spiritual support as we journey through life but also I have with my business Arceus I created a range of products specifically created for women going through menopause but actually you know nature helps it anybody in any way it can so I'm finding increasingly that people are using the products for all sorts of things but that's Nat Femme Botanics and I'll put a link to that um, in the podcast notes for you. Now I was interviewed by the wonderful Tracy Minaknuku on her Sexy Aging podcast for World Menopause Day. And we touched on some quite tender subjects. And you can listen to her podcast. I, again, also will put the link in the notes for you. She's an amazingly effervescent woman who's very passionate about helping women age sexily. The discussion that we had made me think about what going through menopause has really meant to me. And I found myself tapping away at my computer very late last night and I wrote this blog and I thought actually it would be lovely to share it, not only in written form on my blog, but as a podcast too. So this is for all of you out there who are approaching, going through or have passed through menopause or you're somebody who knows somebody who that is happening to. Beyond menopause, there is a different kind of power. Once upon a time, this transition was a time of welcoming in wisdom and the elderhood of woman. We had rituals and ceremonies that showed us the beauty of age and the luster of life's lived experience. But in the space between then and now, there came different gods to worship. Media created an altar for youth and all its flawless beauty. And it is youth that we have been told to hold on to, to be forever 30. But what I've learned as I've journeyed through youth and folly and fleeting moments leading onward and through my own eldering transition is that menopause has brought me peace. I'm happy to let go of those younger days. I love that the flow of hormones has become a slow, dwindling ebb. This is a different kind of power. This is a richer, warmer deeper kind of energy. I've been waiting 
all my life for this. I recall someone much, much older than me saying, when I was only young, that I had the eyes of an older, wiser woman. I do believe that I am growing into those eyes now, and I'm glad of it. For many of us gathering here in the middle of the stream of life, youth was not all that it was made out to be. The simple pleasure of childhood was taken away by thoughtless acts of those who steal innocence or by a loss or a displacement. You know, it doesn't take much for youth to become fragile. A crack appears in our universe and creates complexity around the very beauty of being young and having the world at your feet. I look back on me at 20, at 30, at 40 even. I thought I knew so much then, but really I was like so many others just making it up. As I went along, I ran from shadows, tried to cover up the cracks in self-confidence, and I did not see beauty when I looked in the mirror. It is only now that I see all the things I did not know I had. The acts that created the cracks in my universe revealed how impossible it can be to shelter a child from life's storms. And this knowing cut me adrift from the desire to have children of my own. I sensed I would have wanted to protect them too much and that I would lose even more trust in the world. Even so, there was a momentary fecund panic as the deep unknown waters of menopause neared. Until, that is, I discovered something wondrous. I discovered that simply knowing that the time for fertility had passed is one of the greatest gifts life has offered me. Menopause gently laid the what-ifs and what-could-be's that walk with childlessness and trauma to rest. At last, menopause gave me safe harbour. And yes, of course, you know, it does come with its ticks and foibles. Wastes thicken, fog descends, we get hot for different reasons than we used to. We sweat and creak and dry and droop and yet I've grown to think of this as a rite of passage, an initiation, a veil we must pass through to reach the richness of what waits beyond. And We can anoint ourselves with balms and creams and stick patches on our bellies. And yes, these things help. But a willingness to embrace life beyond youth helps even more. I am grateful for my body in a way I've never been before. I know It no longer has the golden, svelte allure of youth. But the truth is, I love it now in a way I never could when I was young and thinking that the body was all anyone ever saw. I love that menopause eases the burdens of youth from our shoulders. I love the post of postmenopausal, I love that my hair is getting just a bit greyer each day. I love that the space in my thoughts, once taken up with so much urgency, has now become a place to deeply explore knowledge, creativity and compassion. 
rather than seeking approval for what things look like on the outside, I nurture the internal garden of spirit and soul. And maybe because of that, a different beauty now shines through. Sure, menopause can also be a garrulous and stroppy visitor. It shows up in the crunch and gnarl of life and won't take no for an answer. We middling women in the sandwich of things given and things taken away, we just have to open the door and welcome it in. It and the change we navigate alongside it. Through the courses of my menopause transition, I moved halfway around the world. A career ended and a soul path began. I found love. I cared for and then grieved for my parents. I started a business. I connected to the healing power of plants pushing up through the soil and laid my sorrows to rest in that sweet earth. And all of this makes me smile because change is what being in the middle of the stream of life is all about. And now, and even without the reading glasses we buy at the chemist, the view on the other side of menopause is clearer. I look at women who have been here before me and I, I see them, I see them in a whole new way. I think about their lives and their dreams and I marvel at how we have all made it through and I think, you are beautiful. I look at women coming after me and I want to say, don't worry, this too will pass. You are simply passing through the veil as you enter the age of a different kind of power. You are entering the lustrous beauty of eldering. Take it in your arms and love yourself like you have never loved before. Happy Menopause Day. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of The Soul Garden. And if you are interested in um, looking and finding out a bit more about those products that I make for um, supporting women going through menopause, take a look at the Arceus Nat Fem Botanics website, which you can find at nfbalm.com. And until next time, go well, be well, and be beautiful. beautiful.